Hi, I say Taiwan. It's good to see you here, even though we can't meet in person. But I'm praying that you're enjoying the series as we go through. You know, the I am. Jesus says, "I am." You know, I, we're looking at John chapter 15 today, and I would say chapters 14 to 16 of John are like farewell messages from Jesus. You know, Jesus is about to face the most horrific ordeal. Imagine the weight of this burden over his mind. He knew he was about to face betrayal, suffering, humiliation, rejection, and a horrific death. And at that very moment, one disciple was in the process of betraying him, and one of his closest is about to deny him. And there were others; they're going to flee. So, if anyone's heart was troubled, I think it should be Jesus. But look, in chapter 14, Jesus opens with, "Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, and also believe in me." He comforts us with a series of his last words and instructions, and then he closes in chapter 16. He says, "I have said these things to you, to keep you from falling away, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart." I have overcome the world. Jesus says, "Let your hearts not be troubled." You know, Jesus is still encouraging us today. He knows the challenges that we are facing, and he says, "That's why I'm telling you these things." And he's speaking to every one of you because I know some of our hearts we are troubled and we need encouragement. And you know what? Not only our physical body. Needs strength. Our heart needs strength, because that's what the word encourage means. In French, is encore. It means to take heart. You know, to strengthen our hearts. And so Jesus says, "Take heart. I have overcome the world." And He said these things so that we, in Him, may have peace. And I'm praying that this series, you're learning more about Jesus and that you are having peace. So Jesus says. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. And today's passage from verses one to eight. This is the last of the "I am" Jesus proclaims before he goes on the cross. But it isn't the last in our series because next week we are coming back with Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So now let us look at verses one to eight. Jesus says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser." Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine; you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You know the cultivation of vineyards was important for the economy of Israel. So Jesus was not introducing something new; it's something that they were familiar with. And if you notice in this passage, there are four components: there's the vine, the vine dresser, the branch, and the fruit. And what and who are these in the passage? Let's look at the vine first. In the Old Testament, most of the time, the vine was symbolic of the nation of Israel. They were called the past vine, because in Isaiah five four it says this: "What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? You know, God brought a vine, Israel, out of Egypt, but now." The vine has produced wild grapes in Jeremiah two twenty one. Yet I planted you a choice vine, holy of pure seed. How then have you turned degenerate and become a wild vine? So Israel, the vine, it was one of rebellion, unrighteousness, and of injustice. And then we know in Matthew twenty one, Jesus used a parable. He said God's own came to the vineyard. 
He came to the nation of Israel, but yet they cast him out and kill him. So the past vine failed to produce fruit. And now we come to the book of John, and Jesus says here, "I am the true vine." True means it's not defective, it's not frail, it's not false, it's not counterfeit. The past vine, Israel, was defective. And they can be false vines as well. They are the things that we become attached to, and we think these will produce good works. Sometimes it may not be things; it could be a bad or unhealthy relationship. We think it is nourishing our soul, making us happy, but if it is ungodly, it is unhealthy, and it will not produce good fruit. And Jesus says, "He abide in me; I am the true vine." And then there are the branches. The branches are you and I, and we need to be attached to the vine because a branch on its own is useless. A branch cannot have life unless attached to a tree. It's like the relationship of the head and the body. If a member of the body is separated from the body itself, it cannot function. It will die. And just as a branch, when it's cut off from a tree, it will wither and it will die. And Jesus is saying, "I am the vine; you are the branches. Apart from me." You can do nothing. So if you are detached, or even if you are at a distance, you can do nothing. And then there's the vine dresser. Vine dresser is the one taking care of the vine, and that is the heavenly Father. He is the one that cuts and prunes in order that the branch can bear fruit. And then there is the fruit. It is for others. It's not for the branch to look good or to enjoy. You know, the branches are really just to serve the purpose of bearing fruit, so that the vine dresser, our Father, can be glorified. So, just as an unfruitful branch is useless, so is an unfruitful believer. Now, remember, this is so important because Jesus is saying, "I'm telling you these things so that you will not fall away." So that you will have peace, because it is easy to fall away. Because Satan has one job; he wants to tear you down and lead you away from Jesus and not have peace. He wants you to be anxious and worried and fearful. I know that we face a lot of obstacles in life. Sometimes we fall, and God can use those failures to, you know, to make us grow. But you know what? Satan not only wants you to fall; he wants you not to stand up again. And fall away from Jesus. That's why in the latter part of chapter fourteen, Jesus talks about the promise of the Holy Spirit. Stay connected with Him. And now we come to chapter fifteen. He says, "Abide in Me." And abide is mentioned seven times in these eight verses. So, what is an abiding relationship with Jesus? Jesus is saying, "This is the relationship you need when I leave." Is the kind of relationship you need with me in order to bear fruit. You know, did you know that a lot of the fruits we eat now are not grown from seeds? It is actually done by a process called grafting. And if you want to have good, fast, and stable produce, you know they don't grow from seedlings anymore, but rather they use a technique called grafting. You know what is grafting? Grafting was a method used in ancient Roman times. In Jesus's time, it is when you join two parts of the plant and they become one plant. And if, in you know, technical term, is joining the stock and the scion, as you can see in the picture here. You know, my mum, she lives in Australia and she is a great gardener. She learnt it herself. She, I don't know, she just self-taught. So from a very young age, I would see her do a lot of gardening work, and she would experiment. She would do this by trial and error. And I remember once she grew a mango tree from seed, and you know what? It took two years before we saw the fruit, and we said, "Wow, it's so long!" But we were so excited to see the fruit. But when we ate the fruit, it was sour. And then my mum said, "You know what? It's going to take another two years before the fruit will become sweet." And we said, "What? Another two years? That is too long." But then later, she learned the process of grafting plants. And then I would see in the garden, she would, you know, do all these different types of planting, and she would join the branches to a tree with, you know, a cloth to wrap around it, grafting. And that's what she started doing. And you know what? You and I, we are the branches. We are grafted into the vine. Well, yes, once we were far off, you didn't know Jesus. Once we were distant, but now. 
the branch and the vine becomes one. And that is a beautiful process. So today, are you grafted in? Are you grafted in the vine? Are you grafted in Jesus? You know, during the grafting process, the branch is very vulnerable. It is the vine that supports the branch. So if you want to be fruitful, make sure this grafting process is complete and well done. So just as a branch is lifeless, it's dry, it withers when it's an attached to vine, you know, so is your life. If you are unattached, our lives are wasted away without Jesus. There is no purpose. There is no meaning. There is no hope. And you know what? Jesus wants to deliver us from barrenness, from emptiness, from loneliness. And all we have to do is receive from him. All we need to do is receive because he freely gives. To abide in him means to dwell, to continue to stay and rest in him. That's what it is. Abide means keeping close, not just a visit. Sometimes we talk about a visitation from God, right? No. And then the rest of the time, we just do whatever we want and whatever we wish to do. No. The idea of being abiding in Jesus is remaining there, being close to him. And you know what? When you abide in him, he abides in you. And what does that look like? In John 15, 10, it says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. That means simply follow and obey. You know, someone who follows but does not obey, you know, they live with frustration. It's like I have two daughters. They are teenagers. It's like when they just tag along, you know, with me, but they don't, they, they're following, but they refuse to obey me. You know, it's frustrating for her and for me as well. So obey, follow and obey. And then in 1 John 2, 6, whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he, Jesus, walked. So what does abide in Jesus mean? Walk as Jesus walked is how you live, how you conduct your life. And then in 1 John 3, 24, whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us, by his spirit. We can experience this deep and abiding presence. You know, this is how Jesus abided in God. He only did what the father tells him to do. He was completely obedient to his father. He was in constant communion with the father. He prayed and he spent time seeking the father. And I encourage you and I spend time with God. It's important, your worship, your prayer, your devotion, your service to God. Because when we abide in him, the attached branch will receive nourishment. The nutrition that you need, not only to survive, to be alive, but the nutrition that you need to be life-giving so that you will bear fruit. So we don't, we don't just enjoy the fellowship with Christ, but we will also be fruitful. The branch is fruitful not because of our own effort, not because we are good, but because we abide in Him. And you will bear fruit because Jesus is in you. Who wants to be fruitful? You know, type in the chat if you do and say, yes, I do. I want to be fruitful for Jesus. You know, a meaningful, purposeful life. We want that. We want to say yes to God. We want to say, God, I'm here. Use me. But you know what? If you want to be fruitful, there will be a pruning process. The Father is the one that makes sure the branch is fruitful. He is the one that cares and watches over us. But there will be pruning. You know, pruning is done to give the plant a proper shape and direction so that it will grow healthy, you know, and it will control the unwanted plant growth. And, it, you know, the process of pruning will remove, you know, the useless and the dead parts. Therefore, pruning is a regular and a necessary garden practice. And we, I know, we do not enjoy the pruning. You know, I have seen my mother. She's done pruning for her plants. And, uh, you know, sometimes I used to see her prune, you know, what looks like to be a good or even the best part of the plant. And I used to think, what a waste. Why are you doing that? You're cutting away the best parts. But then she would say, it's for greater and better fruit. 
And you know what? She is right. Because if you do not prune, she says, when you don't prune, the plant will continue to grow, but it will just become more leafy. It will not bear much fruit and the growth is unproductive. And you know, God our Father wants us to have a fruitful life, both in quality and quantity. He wants you not only to bear some fruit, it says here, bear much fruit. So for this to happen, pruning is necessary. Maybe sometimes not only cutting off the bad parts, but sometimes the good. But you know what? You must trust that our Father knows best. So how does our Father prune us? You know, the Bible says here, verse 3, cleanse by the word. In John 17, 17, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. In Psalms 119, 9, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good word. You know, the word of God, the reading of the word, the practice of the word is so important. The word convicts and directs. God uses circumstances and different ways to cleanse us. You know, the word prune actually means to cleanse. And that is his purpose. He wants to make us more like Jesus as we learn to forgive, as we learn to trust, as we learn to love, as we learn to give. You know, I remember when I started out ministry, God had a lot of pruning to do. He dealt with my life on all different levels and ways. But I am glad because I know if he calls, he will equip. And you know what? God wants to use you. God wants to cleanse you so that you are able to serve him more effectively and bear fruit for his kingdom. Did it hurt? Yes, it was so painful. It was like doing surgery in my heart. You won't enjoy it, but you will endure it because you know God knows best and you trust that the vine dresser cares for you. Remember, the purpose is not to hurt or to punish or to damage the branch, not to hurt you, but so that you can bear more fruit, that you will endure as you abide in Him. So what are the fruits? The fruits we bear could be converts, leading people to Christ. They are good fruits. You know, coming up, we have an evangelistic meeting. Uh, fruits could be righteousness and godly character. You know, the branch can't just look good and have no substance. We need fruit in our lives. And when people see the fruit in our lives, they will turn to God. They will acknowledge God has the power and they would desire to know more about God. And they will begin to ask God for help and God will show up. And God is glorified through the fruit bearing life of the believer. So as we end today, I just have two questions. Are you attached or detached? You know, perhaps during this time you have stepped away. But you know what? Jesus is here today. He is inviting you to come abide in him. Receive Him into your life. Make a new commitment to Him because He wants to be not only your Savior, your guide, your light. He wants to be your friend. Abide in Him through re reading of the Word, spend time praying and worshiping, act and live like Jesus. If you want to do that, reach out to the church or to your kingdom group leader and just tell them, I want to know more. And we are here. We're willing to walk with you. And the second question I ask is, are you bearing fruit? I know during these past two years, it's been very difficult for many of us. And you may think it's a season of pruning. Well, you know what? After the season of pruning, there will be fruit. So just trust Him. Allow Him to be your Lord over your life, to guide and lead you. And now we're just going to end and I just want to pray for you. Father, I thank you. Father, we make a new commitment today to say truly, you are the vine and we are just branches. And apart from you, we can do nothing. So today, Lord, we 
grateful because you are a good, good father and you are faithful to the end. We know that you know best. So we surrender our lives to you and we say, God, we abide in you as you abide in us. And Father, lead us and guide us. Make our lives fruitful. Release your faith today, God, so that every day, we commune with you through reading of the word, through worshiping and just being and enjoying your presence, oh God. So that, especially during these dark times, that we can bear fruit for you, for your kingdom. We thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,